There's been very little marketing around Redfall, and I wouldn't blame anyone if they don't know much about the title. This first person vampire hunting co-op open world game by the same studio behind Dishonored and Prey has been stealthily sliding closer and closer to release and with that at our doorstep I want to give you everything you need to know in one video including the details on backgrounds, character skills, abilities, item drops, crossplay, hints and tips and more. If you want to know how to win yourself a copy of the game stick around until the end of the video. First off, I want to ease a lot of Arcane fans' minds. The game is built to be played as a solo experience, and it's how I'm enjoying it. Upon hearing Redfall is built with co-op in mind, many of you will be turned off. However, being truly alone is viable and comes without any annoying computer controlled squad mates like in Left 4 Dead. This way, you can experience the creepy and mysterious setting at your own pace. This is viable and will be a little harder Thankfully, for those who want to challenge, as some enemies will be good at keeping a solo player busy. You can explore the world, read the notes, and experience the events at your own pace. However, at any time, you can invite your friends. Up to four people can be in a game at once, with four naturally being a lot easier than one. When you have more teammates, more combos between abilities open up. Riftful can excel when you're combining character powers and abilities to tackle objectives and create exciting gameplay scenarios. Use Layla's lift to throw Jacob up on the roof for optimal sniping, toss Remy C4 onto your robot and have him run into a group of petrified vampires who are frozen solid thanks to Davinda's black light ability. Hide the whole team with Jacob's invisibility cloak and use Davinda's teleporter to sneak past enemies in classic arcane fashion. Riffle is an open world game but can be soloed with any of the heroes says co-creative director Harvey Smith. The pace becomes more exploratory, you can use recon and stealth to gather info on encounters and avoid enemies or get the drop on them. Speaking of pace, Redfall is a fully open world set in Redfall, Massachusetts. Though Massachusetts is a real place, Redfall is obviously completely fictional. It's the biggest world Arcane Studios has made yet. Studio director Harvey Smith says, The setting is narrative rich with lots of environmental storytelling. You'll learn a lot about the lives of the people who lived or lived there. The law is important as a part of how we get under the player's skin. Searching an abandoned house with a flashlight, learning about what occurred there, looking for resources, avoiding dormant vampires, all of that is critical to the experience. Co-creative director Ricardo Bear says, The wonderful thing about going open world is that players have the flexibility to poke around at different things at their own pace. If a particular vampire fight feels too tough, you can always go tackle a nest or do a favor for one of your fellow Redfall survivors to level up or earn some new gear, then come back to that nasty vampire fight. So this game will let you and your friends tackle content at your own pace, you can make this game a vampire killing sandbox adventure or a story driven solo survival horror experience. Speaking of experience, the best way to experience this game will be on the new 40 series Nvidia graphics cards. Nvidia was nice enough to send me a 4090 before the launch of Redfall and I had the chance to play it at 4K with the new DLSS3 technology and man is it damn delicious. DLSS3 uses AI to essentially fill in the gaps to make sure you achieve the highest frame rates possible. The result is a buttery smooth experience at any resolution, which is especially important in the fast paced first person experience. The tech is available for any of the 40 series cards and Redfall is also reflex compatible, which helps the PC and the display to respond faster to mouse and keyboard inputs, giving you an ultra low latency edge over your teammates when going for last hits on vampires. Which brings me to another reason why it will be the best experience. Redfall won't run at 60 frames a second on Xbox Series X at launch. According to Arcane, Redfall is launching on Xbox consoles with quality mode only. So Xbox Series X owners will be running the game at 4K, 30 frames a second, and Xbox Series S at 1440p, 30 frames a second. The 60 frames per second performance mode will be added via a game update at a later undisclosed date and I think that will come along with ray tracing for PC. This doesn't bode well for Xbox owners as I personally prefer going for frames over resolution, though for most people 30 frames will be more than enough. Do note though that Redfall will require an internet connection to play. I feel as though I need to make it clear that Redfall is not a stealth focused game. 
Arcane Austin were the ones behind Dishonored 1 and 2 as well as Prey 2017, yet don't expect Redfall to be the same kind of game. It's built with co-op in mind, so although one character has stealth, more on that later, it isn't a stealth game. You're going to be going in guns and stakes and UV beams blazing. You can choose to avoid notice, but once combat starts, it starts. You'll also be able to change between four difficulty settings, with the last only unlocked when you complete the main story at any difficulty. Now, make sure you loot whatever isn't tied down. Everything from toilet paper to teddy bears has value to the remaining survivors in Redfall. Food can help you recover lost health, new weapons can provide added punch, and any random stuff you collect, like bleach or board games, is converted to currency you can use to buy ammo, supplies, and, and weapons. New weapons are often found inside various loot containers, like kit bags, safes, car trunks, etc., and all come in a variety of rarities, each with their own unique bonuses. Search everywhere and continue to expand your inventory. Don't forget to scrap unwanted weapons for currency. You can have up to three weapons on your person at any given time and you're able to freely switch between them. We have loadout options players already know and love, like rare shotguns and sniper rifles with random weapon traits to make each drop feel like one of an endless potential of combinations, says production director Ben Horn. In addition to that, some of our weapons are unique vampire hunting weapons, like the stake launcher or UV beam that can be used to tactically eliminate the vampire threat. Weapons have different tiers that visually appear as different colors, blue, purple, yellow, green, and then black. Guns drop at specific levels that reflect your own. Additionally, weapons include perks that impact how you play, like mentioned before, creating many build crafting and customization possibilities for players. For example, one such perk is accuracy increases while moving, encouraging a more mobile play style. As many of you have already guessed, Redfall is based around killing vampires, but they won't be your only enemy. You'll be up against human enemies in the form of cultists who are patrolling Redfall trying to keep their vampire masters appeased and sun free. These enemies will be a lot easier to manage than vampires and act as bullet fodder that can overwhelm you in numbers. Vampires themselves pose more of a challenge, not dying from regular attacks and needing things like UV light or a stake through the heart to be dispatched. Regular weapons will simply down them, only for them to get back up after a short recovery. The older the vampire, the more powerful and unique their powers are. Redfall vampires are not your typical undead mystical fantasy. Instead, they're the product of scientific experiments gone wrong, and uncovering the mysteries is part of the draw of exploring and uncovering more of the wild storyline. While fighting vampires and completing missions, you'll be filling up a meter that represents how angry the vampire gods are getting with you. When you anger them enough, they'll send down a super-powered vampire called the Rook. This is extremely difficult to deal with alone, and killing it always results in at least one black quality loot drop. So if you aren't ready to fight, try not to anger the gods too much, especially if you're IGN. <clears throat> So around the open world, you'll find vampire nests. Nests are psychic vampire spaces that randomly appear on the map and offer cool rewards if they can be entered and defeated. These nests give off a blue circle or a sphere of influence around the map that buffs enemies and slowly increases in size until it's taken out by players. So there's a bit of a risk reward in terms of do you defeat them now or do you let it grow? Once at the center of a nest, you'll need to destroy all the smaller hearts first to destroy the main central heart. You then have a short amount of time to grab loot before finding the correct exit door. If you get out before the time is up, you'll get an XP boost. You don't actually lose anything except that XP boost if the next collapses while you're inside. The story of Redfall is a simple one. Mr. Burns, I mean vampires, have managed to eclipse the sun, and the cultists seem to be down with killing anyone not on board. It's up to you to show them the error of their ways. You'll find out more as you play the game, and the events are mysterious to say the least. So you and your mates can all choose to play as the same character, but the skill tree is diverse enough that all four of you could have different utility or playstyle. Alongside the different weapons that can drop, you may find different niches within your group. You'll earn skill points by completing story and side missions hidden throughout the open world and gaining levels. These can be spent on upgrading your character's passives and abilities. Davinda has 38 available upgrades in his skill tree split between four sections. 
This includes upgrades to his three abilities and passives, like an increased amount of lockpicks and health recovery. There'll be enough depth here to satisfy most people. Then we have unique gear called Vampire God Remnant, which will further distinguish your characters. Speaking of playable characters, there are four in Redfall as of release, all capable of soloing and all have options for team play. Let's go through them and their unique powers right now. First is Layla Elson, who moved to Redfall from Wisconsin. She studied biomedical engineering at Redfall Technical University and volunteered at a medical trial research facility where apparently something went very wrong, leaving her with intense telekinetic abilities. Now, her abilities are as follows. She's got the Umbrella, which summons a psychic umbrella to block enemy and friendly projectiles with upgrades available for increased damage and faster recharge. Layla's Umbrella can also release a psychic blast that damages enemies and once upgraded, enemies hit by the blast will trigger a psychic explosion. She then has a Lift, which summons a psychic lift that launches you into the air. You can upgrade it to launch higher, toss enemies into the air and cause a psychic shockwave when entering. Activating this ability leaves a lift in place when you summon it, and players walking through it will be propelled into the air, letting you get places you couldn't before, and giving you the tactical high ground. Then, she has Vampire Ex-Boyfriend. She calls in a favor from her ex-boyfriend Jason, who happens to be a vampire. You find out why through cinematics. Upgraded to increase Jason's damage and attack range. When upgraded enough, Jason can even heal Layla and allies for a percentage of the damage he inflicts to enemies. So Layla has a way to tank damage, traverse the battlefield, and distract and damage enemies with her vampire summon. She's a good choice for those who want a more mystical feeling playstyle and someone that can avoid damage when needed. Then we have Jacob Boiler, an ex-military sharpshooter sent into Redfall just before the sun darkened as part of an elite private security force. Dark circumstances separated him from his platoon, forcing him down a rogue path. Now he stalks the street of Redfall, neutralizing evil from the shadows with a supernatural precision. Look for a mysterious rag raven circling overhead. You may not see him, but Jacob will be nearby. He also has a cool glowing eye. So his first ability is Raven, which commands his Raven to fly forward and mark enemies, with upgrades available for faster recharging and an increased scan radius. The Raven can be upgraded to seek out and damage enemies in its path, if only Jacob was a little nicer to it. The next ability is Cloak. You activate Jacob's stolen Bellwether Cloak to hide from enemies. You can upgrade the Cloak to increase its duration, pass through tripwires undetected, and even lend your invisibility stars to teammates. This is a skill you use if you want to play that stealthy, sneaky guy. This is true invisibility as well. You won't be able to be detected while in this mode, but it won't last forever. When Jacob activates Cloak, enemies will lose him completely, meaning they'll stop attacking. Use this to your advantage if you're in a pickle and need to get out of the action. Last, he has Heartstopper, which summons a ghostly rifle, and you can use the sights to lock onto enemies and then fire to deal heavy damage. It can be upgraded for increased duration and damage and the ability to hit marked enemies through walls. This snaps to enemies as you pull a trigger, making aiming unnecessary. So Jacob so far is seemingly a fan favorite simply because he can stealth around and snipe enemies with ease. He's the character you want to go if you want that arcane traditional experience, as his raven is also able to mark enemies, letting you plan out your vampire killing spree. Keep in mind he focuses on ranged combat, and there will be times you'll be ambushed indoors, so maybe consider the other characters as well. So Davinda Crowsley is a cryptozoologist and aspiring inventor. His recent book tour landed him in Redfall just before it went dark. After years of struggling to create cutting edge tech to hunt supernatural phenomena, everything is finally starting to click. In Redfall, monsters are real and his inventions work. As he puts them to use fighting vampires, he documents every step of the way. If he gets out of this alive, he'll have all the validation he needs. Now his first ability is Translocate. He tosses out a translocation beacon you can teleport to. Allies can use the translocation terminal you leave behind to follow you. Upgrade to cause a shockwave that staggers enemies at both terminals and can create a decoy for enemies to attack. This is the single best traversal ability in the game and may be the sole reason to play Davinda for many people. Then he has Arc Javelin. He throws a javelin into enemies or surfaces to create a lightning hazard that will zap nearby enemies. 
You can upgrade it to increase the electrical pulse range and damage and even create an additional electrical bolt that chains to other enemies. Finally, he has Black Light. It uses Davinda's heavily modified camera rig to create a powerful burst of UV light that petrifies vampires and staggers human enemies. You can upgrade it for healing, an increased radius of effect and duration, and even an explosion at the end of the duration which shadows petrify enemies so you don't have to walk up to them and punch them yourself. Davinda is perfect for crowd control and taking fights in ways where you have the advantage using his range of gadgets and tools. Finally, we have Remy De La Rosa, and she's a combat engineer and a brilliant one at that. She's lived her life on the front lines of conflict, using her mind to protect her loved ones and help those in need around the world as part of an elite Navy rescue unit. With the help of a robot cohort, she's determined to help rescue Redfall survivors and eliminate any enemies that stand in her way. Her first ability is Mobilize. She creates a rallying point where you and your allies are healed over time. You can upgrade to increase the duration, the healing received, and the area of effect. Keep in mind this heals you as well, so it's good in solo play. Her next ability is Siren. You command your robot to distract nearby enemies, making himself a target and absorbing damage. You can upgrade for the robot to heal continuously and shock enemies for that duration. Her next ability is C4 Charge. Toss an explosive device that sticks to targets and surfaces. Upgrade for a faster recharge and increased explosion radius and damage. This can also be used to bomb jump like Junkrat does in Overwatch or the Soldier does in Team Fortress 2. Remy is an all-around character able to sustain herself and allies, distract enemies with her pet, and blow up enemies. I think out of all the characters, she might feel the most like a support, but she most definitely is not and can be built to be an effective solo. All the classes bring some way to survive, some way to damage enemies, and some ways to traverse. It might come down to picking the character you're most interested in finding out more about, as each character has their own input into particular events that happen throughout gameplay. There's no wrong choice. There will be more heroes coming to Redfall down the line, and if you want further info on their skill trees, I'll be putting out a video soon. The game is launching on May 2nd for Xbox Series X, Series S, and PC via Steam and the Epic Games Store. It will also be added to games past day one. Crossplay is confirmed across all platforms, so if you're enjoying single player and your friend jumps online on their, say, Xbox, you can team up on your PC. And that's it. The game is shaped up to be a very different experience to what we've seen from Arcane before. If you want to win a copy of Redfall, all you have to do is comment on my pinned comment below with what you're most excited for with Redfall, like the video as well, and subscribe. I'll announce the winner there. So stay tuned to Dantix as I'll be putting out more specific information before release and be talking more RPG. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, ciao friends.